Hello everybody, welcome to another day of Cosmeteer. Sorry I'm a little not fully organized this morning. I'm still trying to get everything all set. It's been a long night and a long day. I was still trying to download all the ships and get them into the actual folder. I want to copy that image. I want to save this image. And this is going to be the exotic ships. This needs to be whole ships. And then we had a bunch more ships in here. Bear with me a moment. I'm still getting this in the folders. Save image. It's a ghost ship. Good morning, uh, Turtle Tipper, or whatever time zone you're in. There's one more ship in this exotic challenge that I have, which is a new folder, and this is B3Q0. It's supposed to be caps, but. All right. Oh, good morning, B3. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Clear these off. Your objects, select all. All right. We come over here and we'll open up the battle helper. We're going to take a look at these ships and see how they do. So today is April and we are April 13th. 4.13.2024. And someone also requested and we actually probably should put a subfolder in here. So a new folder in here. And we're going to call this one. I guess we'll start with exotic ship challenge. Why not? It's at the top. Exotic ship challenge. Good morning, not your hero. All right. So exotic ship challenge. We'll pull in the first ship, which is going to be B3Q0. It's at the top of the list. So, for the exotic ship challenge, I probably should have pulled in the actual screenshots for those. I have it for yesterday's one. Not yesterday's, the last week's one. Exotic ship challenge, which was this right here. For those that are wondering or watching this for the very first time. So, design an exotic ship using this frame. Let's make sure it's in there. There's a frame right here. Rules, orientation may not be changed. Armor can be placed anywhere, even beyond the structures, corridors, and components, cockpits, reactors, etc. must be within the structure. Shields and weapons are allowed to extend one tile beyond the structure. Examples of good and bad placements below. Ship must travel at least 60 meters per second. Thrusters must have at least one contact point with the structure or be connected to an engine room that must have at least one contact point to the structure. Examples of good and bad placements below. All right. So they did have screenshots of it in our Discord channel that this does, or at least should follow the rules. As you can see right here, there's the actual design of that funny S shape. It is on a darker color. So for the purpose of, it's got a nice rose in there or whatever that is, it looks like a flower. I really like that. That is such an interesting design. I was going to color it white, but I think you can see it. Or if you can't see it, people let me know in the chat. But as far as creativity, I'm liking this interesting design. Did it just cut off one of the ends? Yeah, it did. You see right here? This whole piece fell off. He just lost this whole piece because of this, uh, the, this right here. Which attaches to that. Huh. 
That's interesting. Alright, so I guess we better test the other rules. It has to go 60 meters per 60 meters per second forward, which I'm pretty sure it does based on just looking at the engines. April. Let's pull this one. Easy enough to see the black ship? Okay. Normally when I'm doing these streams, it's, sometimes it's harder to see them. You can see right here, it does go the 60 meters per second forward. And it is shaped pretty neat. I'm going to say as unique, this, this is really, this is a neat idea. I not thought to place four shields facing like this, which seems to be working based on the damage output, based on how many different ion beams are coming at it. And eventually it did cut through on one of them. Oh look, the second piece was actually attacking it from another angle, that's kind of funny. Now I didn't get it set for the ratings because I don't really have, I don't even know where the Excel is, so if somebody in Discord or something passes me it, then I will definitely go back and see if I can rate them. It's been, again, a busy morning and busy night for me. So we'll pull a ghost ship. Now ghost ship right here, I'm just going to say straight out. I haven't seen that many colors on one of these ships. This reminds me of the poppets. I don't know if anybody else has thought about that, but it looks like the, the one of those rainbow poppets. Pop, 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 pop. It's kind of neat. I don't know if anybody should design a ship like that and showcase that before. And then on the inside, he's got nukes. I'm wondering how it's going to hold up against these ion beams. And the rose flower actually fell off, but look at how it moves when, even though it fell off like that. Oh, and he's throwing mines at them too. So there's nukes and mines going off here. That is a pretty... You can also change the background, last button on the top left bar. How do I change the background? Not your hero. How would you change the background on this? Oh, background grid. No. What is that with the three tiles? Three tiles. Oh, change the background. I can change it. What's yellow and orange look like? Whoa. never knew you could do that. That is very nice. We're messing with backgrounds here a little bit. Oh, that stands out a little too much. Tan and teal blue. Still a little dark even on my screen. Yellow and orange will pop. Yeah, we'll just go with black. Or blue. Maybe blue. So I can see it. At least for me. Alright, rainbow pop color pop it. Super cool. Love it. Doesn't have so much forward this way, but it, it, because of how light it looks, I'm pretty sure this is going to fly 60 meters per second forward, so we'll just test that real quick. Interesting amount of nukes. I like in the mines, and then the, the, this poppet idea is just really cool. I like the colors. For distinct uniqueness, I'm, I'm loving how it's, this is rainbow colors. It's pretty neat. 
test to see if it goes a full 60. Five, six, seven. I think it goes just at 60 or 59.9. Did it just slow down? Okay, it barely reaches it. So it goes 15. Okay, there, there it goes. I think it's having... Who knows what it is. It goes 60. That's interesting. So B3Q, zero ship is definitely a powerfully designed ship. Battle helper, okay, let's pull in. Full ship ship. Exotic support transport ship. This one's got nukes. Okay, this one's more of a transport ship than an actual battleship. As you can see, this one's definitely more as a battleship. So let's not judge it based on its combat ability. It has nukes on it. It has lasers and it has these other things, but it doesn't have armor or anything really for it. I like how it has a whole bunch of cargo space for your unique design. Definitely neat. I'm liking how it has a whole bunch of, it even has EMP missile factories on it and a nuke factory. So it makes sense that it's a transport ship to carry EMP missiles and nukes and be able to build them and transport it to other ships. So as a design in itself, it's pretty neat. Based on its size and its armor, I'm pretty sure it will also move forward the way it's speed. As you can see, combat ability for this, I mean, the way that the nukes are placed, it's really coming in at a totally different. People are still sending images. Oh, some hidden gems, okay. That's cool. That's nice. All right, we got one more last ship in this exotic challenge, which is uh, Plouse's. Plouse was actually the first one. They actually reversed it when they got submitted, but that's okay. One, two serpents. Somebody made a laser wall with a ton of shields. Will that actually work? I guess it will with the amount of reactors he's got in there. Hello, Hosa. Is this an orbiter? Or just the way that it flies? I already tell you, it goes faster than 60. It goes 124 with the amount of speed on this thing. All right, two orbiters watching, and they're just going to orbit around each other. So let's take out one orbiter. And let's throw in IMB. beam. I'm gonna say that that's pretty effective actually. Eventually he's going to cut through on one of these angles. Yeah, for people, those that are watching and see, an orbiter does work in Cosmeteer, which is a ship that just flies around and around. I think the only downside is if you're playing the game, kind of like how I'm playing the game, it can cause dizziness for those that have that sensation to get dizzy and just keep watching the ships go around and around and around and then I, I don't know if B3Q will B3Q B3 is right there you see how that piece fell off this piece so as you can see there's weaknesses from an orbiter if you're swinging around and around and around
Try the pink one against the Orbiter. Pink one? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's try the pink one against this Orbiter. Well, I think the Orbiter is still going to do pretty well. Mainly reason why is nukes don't heat sink. And because this ship moves at such a fast pace, which it does, the nukes I don't think he's going to have a chance to land. Maybe they do. Maybe they can land. Yeah, it landed on the backside. Some of them, are, a lot of them are not landing, but if, if any of them keep landing... Oh, and then he's got mines too. That makes sense. So the mines and the nukes together disable the ship. The puppet ship one. <clears throat> it's a pop-up ship. That's all I think of. It's just pop-ups. I'm pretty sure that's what you're designing there, Ghost. It looks like a puppet, a large puppet. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of neat. <laughs> I mean, distinctly, I gotta, I just gotta give mad points to this one because this, this is a, this is a cool design. It makes you think of a puppet, rainbow puppet, right? Something you give to little kids, or even if you sit at your coworker's desk and you see people have these rainbow puppets. That's that's definitely what I would call an exotic ship. It's also made to be campaign friendly. Okay, so it has, oh yeah, it has a hyperdrive. There's probably airlock somewhere in here. I don't even know. There's the airlock all the way down here. Storage, he has extra storage space. Maybe not, maybe that was for the mines. And he even has Hyperium storage over here too. <laughs> Definitely can be a friendly campaign mission ship. So I can see it being effective. It was, it's pretty decently effective for what it costs. So thank you for sharing, that's cool. All right, we'll go to Ghost Ship Challenge. We got, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but Dwayne, Juan, Dwayne Juan, new to our channel. Um, actually, let me pull up the nail of this, this challenge, everything. This was a ghost ship challenge. Huh? Let me redo that. There's the PNG. Okay. So this one is, <clears throat> want to open a little ship challenge. Next, make sure it's on the screen. Want to open up a little ship challenge, building challenge, just for the fun of it. Anyone is welcome to participate. No actual PvP competition or anything. We can just all check out and play with the designs. Rules. 550k credits, including resources. Only weapons with ammo. Using ammo. No missiles. Energy weapons. Point defenses, etc. No kites or brick cheese. Can't wait to see your builds. Alright. So, now that we know what the challenge is... We got Don Wayne, so only projectile weapons on this one. And we'll pull in Ghost Ship. It's got to be under 550k, which they are. But I do like that somebody commented it before, and I do want to be the next challenge is crew limitations. Right now we have just cost limitations. We see 170 and once 124 crew. We we'll want to do a challenge where it's just crew limited, limited, and a bunch of other few limitations to really see how people can optimize their ships. So for a full projectile ship, I like how he has a little cannon back here. It's kind of neat. I think Ghost Ship, because it's longer and it's got more protection, like these two protections right here, this is a neat idea. Having this large shield and then these smaller shields here like that. I've noticed that when ships ram each other and then it glitches out sometimes. Maybe for the stucking code or something like that. I don't know. I haven't looked at the code. Let's actually take off this and let's look at the paint job. 
both of them are painted very nicely. I know we're only looking at half the ships because it tore off parts of it. And then this one has this nice red and black hue and accents. I think what they're lacking is side thrust and reverse thrust to be able to lock in properly because it's just going to spin around and around for a while. Here, let's just look at the paint jobs. Interesting design. I, I think what I would take away from this, at least for me personally, is the small reactor with these 12 crew members for large shield and these two smaller shields. I like how this is placed right here. There's no defense on the side right here, so if missiles or anything else were to hit the sides like this, that wouldn't be good. But if it's a straight on just projectile weapon based on this, the challenge that was made, and then having this, this larger shield literally protect just that, hyper focuses down these little alloys. You can see right here it's protecting against this, and so even when he loses his armor, then it protects more. while still holding out. So it's kind of neat. That's a unique design. And then Don Wayne. Uh, I like his design here too. And the paint job. Kind of almost a similar idea for the reactor and the shields up front. Just like this. But this is a more unique design. I haven't seen this done with uh, the power core, power capacitor and then the large shield. And then the small reactor. You can see it's actually pretty effective. He still lost his piece, but then he has the secondary shields back here. And by then the damage is done. And then they're going to spin around with each other for a while. Neat idea, neat concepts. And I like how Don Wayne's also has back armor on his. Uh, next challenge announcing flaws is when you were just asked in Discord. Uh, whenever we got time, maybe I'll announce it tomorrow or on this one. I, mean, I was still thinking of the idea. I haven't fully gone through it yet. Thanks for asking. Uh, that question was asked in Discord and not in the YouTube chat, so we didn't see it. Let's pull up this one. Cannon only C, which is done by Hosep. We'll pull up another one from Plows. Yeah, the other design was made very much with the challenge in mind, knowing that there would be no missiles, etc. Which would be that Reaper one. All right. I'm mean, gonna think Klaus is, has an advantage with four being able to wipe out through the shields, but I could be wrong because this only had a small sh small reactor for the shields, the three shields yet. So it looks like Hostess one definitely went. My my money was on the wrong one. This one's cheaper, has less crew, and this is a ramming one. Yeah, or maybe that is a large, that is a large reactor. But the three shields just doesn't hold up against four shields. Even though there's four of these. Yeah, he has a larger salvo. Sustain fire. The sustain fire wins. Yeah, he didn't have enough fire. He saw that the shields did go down, but he didn't have enough sustained fire to get past all the way through. And then this one is just definitely... That's a cool little ship. I like it. All right. I guess the real, I guess the real question here is, let's pull that off. It's an, yeah, if I get rid of the rammer and we'll pull in the reaper. I want to see how this does first it. Because it's got this layer of shields, this layer of shields, and these shields on the back. I think 
is actually going to protect with all the layers of shields. Oh, he lost one. Okay, he cut him in half. That goes for show. Sustained fire definitely is beneficial. And then the way that he has this set up, you see how fast it reloaded? It didn't, well, wasn't even that much downtime. That definitely does way better than I was expecting. So for those that are looking at the design that was built by Hosep here, and then you see how fast it reloads. This is a really, really neat idea to take away. Like if you put this in a ship, his reload time and sustained fire on this really provides huge benefits for the amount of damage it does. So for those that are looking at a cannon design, Hosep always comes up with some pretty neat ideas. So it did way better than I expected. And plus it looks cool too, so. We got one more ship in here, which is Turtle Tipper ship. I'm actually interested to see how Turtle Tipper ship does. His cost is way lower. He's got more crew, but I think his was the, his is the most cheapest ship, Turtle Tipper ship. It kind of reminds me of like uh, ghosts, like Ghostbusters and stuff. It's almost purposely meant to fly at angles, which it does. Yeah. I don't know if you're designing it purposely to be an orbiter, but because of its interesting shape, Once the ship locks in, like if the only thing I would say to possibly change with Hosep's ship with this is it looks like it's supposed to be semi of a rammer. If you added in some kind of hooks with the sustained fire, it's supposed to be an orbiter. Okay, so if it's supposed to be an orbiter, the AI messes up. What we do here is we come over here and we'll take the AI and do none hold the ship and then we'll target and see if it does what it's supposed to do now it's going to do what it's supposed to do with the AI off on that one I think that would be far more effective so it's designed purposely to be an orbiter as you can see, it flies around and around. I can see how that will be effective. Orbiters are definitely, definitely a way to battle in a ship. And obviously you stare this long enough. I don't know about everyone else, but I, I get dizzy staring at it for too long. So we'll just go to times two speed here just to see it a little bit faster. Yeah, orders make they make me dizzy. So that's why I'm gonna speed this up a little bit just to see if this thing go a little bit faster. Pretty sure the orbiter is going to possibly win as long as it has enough ammo to do so, which he does. He's got sulfur, he's got ammo in the woods. So eventually, I think it will. I don't know, he's got enough shields. Here we'll go, Titan's four speed. Make everybody sick a little bit. Without being able to have disruptors and full projectiles, okay, he is able to he is able to whittle away the shields and then do a little bit of damage on the inside. So eventually, it's either they run out of ammo or that happens. We're gonna go the full times eight speed. Hopefully, times four doesn't mess the game up too much. But that's cool. Total Tipper, this is a cool design. That's neat. 
It's kind of neat. I like it. All right, now comes to the safe reactor challenge. Now the safe reactor challenge, let's pull up the actual rules on this one. Safe reactor by Hosep. So this one, for those that are just watching this for the first time, reactor explosion is too dangerous. So we need to protect the reactor. Use the setup to build energy only ships, no cost or crew limit. Ships could fly at least 70 meters per second forward. No extra reactor capacitors are allowed, only this one reactor. Also removing armor from this is also not allowed. If you keep the armor there, uh, you can change the armor into one by one or more one by two armors to weave them. Kites are allowed, but ship's attack defaults must be the same as their flight direction. No flipping a ship. All ships will spawn without resources, so all parts should be changed before use. And the entry. Oh, we have one more for the ghost challenge. Let me go back one step and take it if I have it. I gotta go find it in a ghost ship. Ghost ship challenge. Better I did one. Okay. I don't mind going back. Ghost ship challenge. We had one more ship just come in. Which was Butters. Let's drag this in. Doesn't like it when I do that, does it? Save this image. Drag this in here. Okay. One more ghost ship challenge. We'll pull in this one and then we'll pull in this one. Oops. This one's built by Butter. I don't know if I wanted to pull another orbiter. This one, it looks like... That's kind of neat. I like this weaving of the armor in the back. And then if somebody does shoot down the middle, he will definitely have two separate ships because it's fully built as its own ship. This reminds me of the iceberg. So I don't know if anybody has seen the iceberg ship. This reminds me of a separate case of the iceberg. At least with the pointy edges and everything. I'll show what I mean once I get to that. But with four cannons, as you can see, it's it definitely has a better chance against the orbiter. As you see, he's already taken out the the two chain guns. Whether or not it wins or not, I don't know. But that's not the point. I really like Turtle Tepper's ghost. It reminds me of like Ghostbusters. Kind of neat. As they're spinning around and thinking about that hammer, I'm gonna go look for this ship. It's a, uh, it's a built-in ship. It's under design contest. I don't think it's in this one. No. Go back. It's right here. Iceberg. So it reminds me, similar to this iceberg, except instead of three sections, this one's just two sections. But then obviously it's designed very differently too. I didn't meant for it to actually do what it just did, but... This reminds me of the iceberg, but I'm a smaller version of it. Which is kind of cool. Maybe that's not what I meant for it to do, but I just wanted to showcase what I mean by when we're looking at uh, Buttership right here. It reminds me of the iceberg, except it's just two sections. So the two separate ships, which is cannons. And then this obviously is much faster, and then I like this weaving of this armor in the middle. So it's kind of neat. Dizzy time, yeah. I, I, we're gonna be done with the dizzy. I'm actually done with being dizzy. Cool designs, I like it. Just orbiters, they definitely make me dizzy. All right, to the safe reactor challenge. We got B3Q0. B3Q0, I don't know if you were trying to go after Star Wars, like C3PO, but you have a B3Q0, maybe it's a droid. I could be wrong. I don't know my Star Wars lingo at all. It's been a while. Alright, so we got a ship by Butter and we got a ship by B3Q0. Now the challenge is you only can use energy weapons. You have to use this reactor in the middle. I like how he colored it green. That's kind of neat. 
There's no cost limitations. Must fly forward at a decent speed, which I'm sure this one does. This one's a kite. I'm thinking his beams are never actually going to reach. Yeah, he's going to stay out of range. Now, the nice thing about the safe reactor challenge for those that are watching, it really segregates the ship out very well because people will stay in each one. So you really have to actually force to have dedications. So they have dedications for each section of the ship. So it's basically four sections of the ship which forces people to do a little bit more optimization, or at least think of it. So the challenge really gets people to think something outside the box, just a little bit. And that's why everybody has it, so that people are not walking across the reactor for different scenarios. But these ships, I don't think, are ever going to reach each other. One is the attack distance is set a little bit far away, so it's never going to reach. And this ship is never going to reach this other ship because it's just not going to go fast enough. So they're just going to dance around each other for a little bit. Still, neat ideas for those that are thinking. Really neat ideas. I like both of them. Let's pull in another ship. Pull in We'll go back to Buttership in a bit. Let's see ships that actually attack each other. Because this one does not look like it's a kite. This one's built by Ghost. Interesting crossbeam section here. So this, I'm assuming, is supposed to ram and then cut at two very different angles. But I think the downside of this is this ship right here, built by B3Q, zero. is probably going to eventually cut through it because this one has no way to do direct frontal damage. And you see how this ship's holding it off? Yeah, I don't see how these beams are ever going to even touch. Maybe it will. Maybe if it cut it off. And this one's gonna cut this one off. I don't know. It's such a different design that I don't even know what it will happen. Here is right here. You see this uh, people running back and forth between the reactor? This is where you, I would suggest having more dedications. People are not running it out of the reactor like this. Where this one you see less people running to the reactor, they're staying in their sections. Which also keeps it so that the energy is constantly flowing. Where this one you see how people are running around back and forth. This is something I would suggest to change. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. But you see how there's a lot of energy not going because people are running back and forth through the reactor. But effectively wise, I'm going to say Ghost Ship right here is doing far better than I was expecting with these cross-section beams. It's eventually peeling off the armor. Which is probably what it was designed to do. That's why these beams are facing that way. If you ask me and I saw this firsthand, yeah, I did not expect this to happen with the cross beams too either, Turtle Tipper. This is This is definitely doing what I didn't expect it to do. Yeah. 
Um, I'm going to say I didn't expect it to do that. So if anybody's looking for an interesting, unique, different design, this definitely gives a unique, different take on it. Yeah. It peeled off all the armor from that ship. Definitely different. All right, I'm kind of interested to see how it does versus the kite, because I think this one goes a little bit faster. Which one will switch? Okay, that's the crossbeam one. I'm kind of interested to see how this does versus this. Is it fast enough? Is the question. Nope. I'm not gonna catch this one. This one has excess engines to go backwards. So I'll never reach it. I'm pretty sure I know what the kite will do eventually. It's got eight beams, so it has enough to rip through large shields. And he's only got small shields here, so eventually it's going to rip through this, I'm pretty sure. And then it looks like he has a dedication set to it. So you see how each one person's in their sector, like I was saying. You got your back sector, back sector, and then the side sides. People are not running through the engine very likely how this one is. See how people are running through the engine? I mean, running through the large, rea large reactor core. This is a slowdown, which causes that when you only have one reactor, it's you see how some of the beams and everything are not firing? There's no dedications. Where this one, yes, there is power issues, but you see how everything's still functioning because people are not spending time running through the reactor. Yeah, it would peel against armor. Crossbeams are actually meant to take in on non-beam iron ships. You cut across. I mean, this is... Each idea has their own, own merits. That's the whole point of this, at least the channel, that the main reason for these challenges. Not necessarily to show people winning or losing, but to give people different ideas. Safe Reactor Orbiter. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. We're gonna pull on this one. Okay, what the whole sub ship right here is supposed to do is I'm supposed to take off the AI. Actually, I probably should read what he put in there. Safe reactor challenge. When you place your ships in the thread, please don't use battle helper. Instead, please pause the game, place both ships without resources. Then, while spawning ship with library, turn one ship to player two. Oh, okay. I've done that. He wants me to spawn the ships in. We can do that. So for those that didn't know, I never really showcased doing this because it takes so many extra clicks. But what you do here is you play as player one. What? Huh? Did this not pull in properly? Okay. I didn't put them in their own folders. That's okay. So, we got one... Let me clear everything off. <coughs> so you can play the ship as itself. So you can put it on this ship like this. And then you can play as, and you play as player two. And then as player two, we can pull in another ship. In this case, it would, I don't, the kite ship's definitely going to do different. Pull in another ship, and then over here, I can come over here, back over here, and play as all players. And then I can force them to attack each other. Kind of like this. <coughs> And now we're not doing with Battle Helper, we're just doing with whatever the actual defaults are set. So this one's gonna orbit around. <laughs> and just based on this alone, I can already tell that this one, this one can't turn fast enough. We're just gonna go times four speed so everyone doesn't get super super dizzy. Zoom out a tiny bit. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna cut through this one just like that. And eventually this one's never gonna be able to reach the orbiter. But 
I mean, if you're facing first missiles or other things like that, this orbiter wouldn't be as effective, but it's still a cool design. I like it. Oh, I have to hold down what key? What is that? What is that saying? I have to hold down... Is there a key? Till the key above tab. Never knew the... I guess you can... So hold down the till the key has to... Oh! <laughs> okay. I see what you mean now. Clear objects. Okay, so if you hold down the tilde key above tab, just like Not Your Hero is saying, you can take your ship, pause the game obviously, take your ship, hold the tilde key down, I can drag in a ship, so I'll drag in with zero power, you see it has no power, and then if we take another ship, hold on, I have to hold the tilde key down, the tilde key down, drag in another ship, place it some distance away, and you see this ship will also have no power. And then, well, I'm supposed to play as player two. I'll just place this one further away. We'll place it here. Okay. Then we have to play as all players. And unpause it for a second. <clears throat> hey. Oh, I can't control them until the command the command deck is powered up. Yeah, I can't, I can't click, I can't do anything. So they kind of just sit there. I still, there we go. Now this one can attack this one. Is the command deck powered yet? There we go. You just change your team to give them AI. You don't have to attack manually. Well, I was just showcasing different ways to do it. You can give them AI. They're saying, come over here, and I can say AI. Just give it normal AI. And then eventually they attack each other. I'm pretty sure this kite ship, because of how fast it can go backwards, He's not even using all of his engines. He's got these, just only these four engines going. He still has all these ones and all these ones. So as far as ever reaching the other ship, doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Cool design, very cool design. Definitely a lot of cool ideas in here. ships right here I get the only thing I would I don't even know if I would say to change anything but I would so I'll probably say add a few more shields just because on this ship right here if you have a ship that can go very very fast which you probably won't and you can cut off these shields that's where you would have a tiny bit of problems I don't even know if these ships will do it because I've never even tested this, but if you if you pull in a whole bunch of these tiny little itty bitty ships that do fly at a decent speed. Four of them for an example. Maybe that's about beyond the, the cost wise, but if you wait a second, that wasn't the ship I wanted. April. Where's that kiting ship? <laughs> yeah, in that particular challenge. Now, obviously, this is not challenge ships, but I wanted to see if he could go faster than backwards, which he, he can. It looks like 102. That's really fast backwards. Only took out one shield, and they're aiming for the second shield. Let's see if four of these guys. 
because of the speed he has backwards. But I was just gonna say that I don't know if two shields is gonna be enough. He lost a little bit of damage, but it did enough damage to take out most. I don't have enough speed to actually fully catch up to that ship. Still, cool idea. Really neat. I like it. All right, we have one more ship in here. I didn't notice it, but I'm going to pull it in. We're going to pull in Plaus's ship. Plaus. I think we saw this last week. And another safe reactor ship. I'll just show you against each other that they don't they don't ever attack each other just the way he has it designed. But it's kind of neat. This one right here, he's got all these little AI attack points. He's got these little bombs. It forces the AI. See how the AI is trying to attack this little crystal. And then he has all these other little ion prisms. Obviously, cost effective wise, this is very expensive to waste ion beams in the actual game but if you're fighting it for pvp and those other different cases this is a very deadly ship and i'll showcase this as to why i'm actually wondering how it does versus this cross ship just because a cross ship this one doesn't ever attack down i guess it will actually there's no ai attack points I'm thinking the amount of damage that this thing can do. I've just never seen anybody make a ship like this. It's kind of neat. He's got too many disruptors going for it. Eight disruptors down the middle, on top of the damage that it's going through cut through the shields and then if it, you did have anything that actually could shoot different things but I think the, the one that's really gonna stand out is the kiter in that case there's just one other safe reactor but I'm fairly certain this one right here because of its design Such a neat, interesting concept. Oh, that definitely did what I wasn't expecting. Yeah, each ship has its own pluses and minuses, and each ship does differently versus each other, so interesting ideas i like i like all the ideas that were placed here they were all very very neat cool ideas so thank you all for sharing thank you all for being part of the community sharing your ships so we all can see different designs different concepts different ideas if you enjoy this content please feel free to hit the like button it helps me out a ton it helps to push out this content to other people bring awareness to it if you like please feel free to leave me a comment down below tell me what you like tell me what you don't like especially what you don't like so that i can improve and make better content if you have not already, please feel free to subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, that's okay as well. Come back once a week, once a week, once a month. Check out what content I have. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching. And you all have a wonderful rest of your day.